we have Raising the Floor US. And Greg, it is all yours. You'll see me pop on at two minutes to stopping, and then I'll do something like raise my hand if, uh, if, if you go over. It's all yours, Greg. Thank you. Okay, very good. The, um, <clears throat> all right, the, uh, you have been working uh, on trying to make computers simpler and um, working with uh, individuals uh, in uh, a wide variety of, of, of contexts. Uh, we're, this summer we're going into um, Amer uh, rural, I'm actually here at the Rural Community College Conference right now, and um, also working with uh, tribal and uh, as well as major universities. But it's interesting, in all of the work we've been doing, we've been finding that um, we started off looking at trying to make uh, products easier, AT in particular, easier to move from one computer to another and things like this as kids moved around. And what we found uh, in, the, in, the, in the process of doing this is that there was another problem that arose, something that I call um, digital affinity, and that is um, just the ability to use technology, to learn technology. And, and this isn't a, an intelligence thing. Um, I have people at the university who are blazingly brighter than I am uh, who can't figure out how to use their assistive technologies. Um, uh, the pandemic came along, Zoom came along, they couldn't show up for classes in Zoom because they couldn't figure out how to get on. Um, it's like singing or athletics or drawing. Um, it's, a, it's a talent that some of us have and some of us don't. And uh, unlike the other talents, like I can get a job if I can draw and if I can't draw or I can't sing or I can't do everything, but people who have a lot of trouble with computers, it's a real problem. Now, we used to think that this was only a problem for older people because we have all the digital natives uh, and they can come on and type 2,000 miles an hour with their thumbs. But what we found is that those same digital natives, when they hit computers or they get into the college or community college, um, they suddenly find they hit Windows and they're completely lost. Um, and so we started trying to figure out how to bring some of the ease forward and especially individuals who are having trouble. And so one of the things that we came up with was, uh, was something we call Morphic. Now these are, by the way, free open source. Uh, you can download them and I'll show you how in a few minutes. Um, so the uh, you can see it down here, it's a little uh, bar. Now this is, some people said, oh, it looks like an overlay. It's very different. Um, an overlay works in a, a browser window and it only works on the page or the site that you're on. Um, these are actually uh, bringing out features that are built in the operating system. So they work on all browsers, all apps, all everything uh, on the computer. So the first one we found is, is if you have the text and it's just too small. Now, some of you know that you can just hit the control key in a plus and you can make the fonts uh, bigger in the, in the, uh, in the, um, browser but that doesn't help you with any other program it doesn't help you with the rest of the browser it only does the content um, and so one of the things we brought out is something that's actually called screen scaling but that's kind of complicated so we just call it text size and by just clicking on it, it just changes the scale of the screen and so you see everything on the screen gets larger all right so you can do that uh for eagle eyes, they can actually make it smaller and get more desktop if they want to. Um, there's also a magnifier. And again, um, it lets you, um, you know, look in if you just have to magnify a small area. And the mouse works while you're doing this. So for example, I can highlight uh, this text um, if I want to while I'm using the magnifier. The SNP tool, uh, again, is uh, in there. Uh, this is, has nothing to do with disability, but it's a very nice usability feature. Uh, and you can use it to clip a picture of anything, and then you can paste that in. We have students using it for code. We have uh, individuals taking pictures and using them in reports and things like this. Now, as I'm going along, all of these features that I'm showing you are all things that are already built into the computer, okay? And as we show these to people, a lot of them go, well, gee, I didn't know any of this stuff was in there. And, and that's part of the problem. Part of the problem is that um, there are all these access features that could be available that people are just not even aware are available. But we also have a different problem. And that is that 
when we talk to people, we show it to them and they say, oh, this is fantastic. And then we see they're not using it. And we ask them why. And they go, well, uh, I couldn't find it. Or uh, it's in the control panel and I never go in the control panels. And I said, why don't you go in the control panels? And they go, well, because um, I'm afraid I'll break the computer. And this was the first time we had heard this. Uh, we was in a um, job center. And so we thought that this is just something that was a, a job center kind of thing. Oh, yeah, well, this, you know, we won't see this with digital natives. And then we found it in the community colleges. And then we found it in our research universities. And then we started looking into it further. And we found out people who provide support to people using computers in libraries are afraid to go into the control panels. So these are the people who are supposed to be supporting people who are using computers. and. What we found was that people think of going into the control panel um, sort of like you or I would think about going under the hood of our car. So if I told you that you should go under the hood of your car and make these changes to make your car work better for you, you know, how many of you would actually go under the hood of your car, even if when I did it, it made your car work better for you? Even better yet, how many of you would go under the hood of the car of your school or the public library's car. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about asking people to go under the hood, if you will, of the computers at the school or at the public library and make changes. And they're afraid to. But unfortunately, where are all the accessibility features? They're in the control panels. So one of the things that this has done is, in addition to people discovering these for the first time, it's also making it so that people are um, free to use them. Now, you'll also notice that we mixed in with text size and magnifier, things like SNP, which is not an accessibility, or even dark mode or night mode. And the reason we did this is that there's another problem we have with individuals who need to be using uh, technologies, assistive technologies, um, but they're afraid to. Um, they don't want to be identified. Um, they are in high school and they would rather do poorly in school than uh, do poorly in their social life. And they're afraid that, um, that if they're using AT or something like this, if they have disabilities that don't show, they'd rather not out themselves if you would. And um, this is really, too bad because uh, <laughs> this is a really important learning age, but you can understand it. But one of the things we try to do is to have it so this turns out to be more of a utility bar, if you will, that everybody finds useful. And we find lots of people who use, I use the text size all the time. As a matter of fact, you can drag this bar around. Uh, and if you have more than one screen, um, you can drag this up to another screen and then click uh, text size and it'll zoom or, or shrink that particular screen. So you can use it as a really quick way of, of making things larger and smaller if you don't know how to do that otherwise. Um, probably one of the most used features on here, however, is read selected. And with this, you can select text in any app. Now, Microsoft has a read selected in Word, Edge, and OneNote. Um, they're all from Microsoft, but they all operate differently and they don't operate anywhere else except in those apps. Um, so this one is actually uses all of the same components from the Microsoft operating system, but it allows you to select text in any application anywhere. And in this case, I don't know what I'm in, um, but the, if I just- Color blindness or color vision deficiency. So you can do that. And again, with any of these things, if you right click on them, it drops you into settings and the settings now are in the control panel, which people would normally be afraid to go into, except they don't know that they're there. It looks like you're just changing the settings for this. And so you can see, I can change the voice and I can change the speed that it reads at um, and, um, and drop back out again. Now, contrast is something that we put in here for people with low vision, uh, people who had trouble reading, uh, but what we found is that uh, we got a lot of feedback from people who had migraines or headache problems, and they would tell us that this really helped them. Um, and I said, well, there's a dark mode. And they said, well, yeah, but the dark mode uh, makes some things dark and other things not. So it's sort of a incomplete, whereas 
they found when they did the contrast, um, they can set it. We also found individuals, interestingly, who have reading problems who want low contrast. So they actually, instead of having uh, you know, uh, yellow on black or something, which you can also choose. Um, they would actually have black on brown, which to me is almost unreadable. It's just really hard to see. Uh, and yet this is what they found was easier to read for them. And, and um, since I don't really understand exactly what the experience for someone with dyslexia is, we, we get descriptions, et cetera. Um, it's not clear, but um, we've heard this actually from um, multiple times over the years that people with, uh, and even in the web content accessibility work, um, there's guidelines for high contrast and they say, well, we need low contrast uh, often. So you can set this to be anything that, that you want. And then again, uh, we have school where we color code our charts and uh, put them out of reach of some individuals. And so there's color and this just is hand, handles the uh, color filters, which allows you to adjust the colors. Uh, you can again, go in here and you can select the type of color blindness that you have. And what it does is it shifts the colors. So the colors for you with your color blindness that would turn out to be the same end up being different colors. So you don't have uh, two lines on the chart being different colors if you can see color and the same color if you have a particular kind of, of color blindness. And then there's dark mode and night mode. There's also a, a, a range of other types of um, uh, features that you can get. Uh, just a second, I'm having to fight my uh, uh, the uh, uh, Zoom, which is covering my thing up so I couldn't see it. Um, the, um, so you have the ability to, um, you know, more settings here. So you can see mouse size, pointer size, again, drops you right into the control panel and you can adjust the pointer size, uh, professors take note, um, your students would really like you to use larger pointers when you're giving lectures and, and pointing to things on screen with your small pointers. Um, so this is the sort of the basic, uh, uh functions of, of morphic. Now, the second thing that Morphic does, in addition to taking the accessibility features that are in the computer and making them uh, easier to, to see, uh, is that it gives you the ability to save the setup. So if you have your computer all set up and all your AT set up, you can actually go in and save the uh, setup of the computer. And then when you uh, go to a new computer, you can apply that setup and it'll set the other computer up the same as yours. Um, so if you are at home and you're doing it and then you have to go to the uh, use a computer at school or use a computer at the library, uh, you'd be able to apply it and, and have it set that computer up uh, to be the same as your home computer. Now, up until this year, um, there's been one problem with that, and that is that if you use AT, if you go to the library, almost none of the computers at the library have AT on them at all, usually one or two up in upstairs someplace and not down in the room where you're supposed to be taking a special tutorial or something, or even in the schools. Um, uh, one community college, they only have uh, three, two or three computers that have any AT on them. They're over in a corner of the library and they have a big sign above it and says, absolutely no, in big, you know, huge print. Absolutely nobody is to use these computers except people with disabilities. Um, well, first of all, um, when people go to the library and they want to be with friends, there's study rooms, they can't use the study rooms. Secondly, who wants to go over and sit down at one of those computers? Um, if you don't have a visible computer and you sit there, you could just as easily have one of your classmates come over and tell you that you're not supposed to be there. Instead, we've created something called AT on Demand. And with AT on Demand, you'd be able to sit down to any computer anywhere in the school and the assistive technologies you need would show up on that computer set up just the way you need them to be. And then when you're done, they disappear. Same thing at the library. So if you go to the library, you don't have to go upstairs. You could use any of the computers. You could sit with your friends. You can go down to the tutorial in the basement uh, training room. 
sit down to any computer in any room. Uh, you sign in and uh, you go to apply your save setup and it would detect that you don't have the AT that you need, uh, bring it down, install it on the machine, set it up just for you. And then when you're done, you'd be able to uh, get up and, and leave. So uh, this is the way uh, AT on demand works. Now, AT on demand and Morphic are both free. Uh, and you could just go to uh, morphic.org to, um, to, to find them. Um, so if you just go to uh, morphic.org uh, and then you can just uh, scroll to the top and you can uh, click on, on get morphic. Just a second. If I make this a little wider, you can see the it's uh, under under the uh, if you make it narrow, it'll be underneath the, the, the menu. But if you have a full size screen, uh, you'll see it's right up here in the corner. You can just get morphic. Um, and so then you just click on get morphic and you can see you can get it for Mac OS or Windows. Um, and there's even a free ability to create custom morphic bars if you want to do that uh, as well. So that's a, a quick review of, of morphic and ATOD. Um, and so um, uh, again, if you have questions, you can ask them in the chat area. <laughs>